Hello. 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 Talented YouTube woodworker Rex Kruger has asked me to make a Native American war club with him like this. Well, no, not like this. More like this rifle stock version. Yes, but no Christmas tree on top. A blade goes there. He'll be making the rifle stock, and I'll be forging the blade out of these 1095 and 15 in 20 steel burrs. As you can see, our steely wheelie is tacked together along the edges with this welder. It'll then be heated and forge welded. Once the billet feels solid, it is drawn out for more cutting, stacking, and welding to increase the total layers of our Damascus. Repeating this process several times will give us a layer count of just over 300. A rough sketch is being made of the blade until I'm satisfied with its qualities. Then the tip is ground in and further layout is undertaken with some blue dicum. These lines will be used to lay out some conical shaped divots in the steel that when flattened in a press will hopefully add some character to the piece. This is similar to how ladder pattern Damascus is made. Thank <laughs> you. 
More layout is undertaken here so that the tang can be properly centered and cut out. It will not be forged out in this case. Number one, I need a fair amount of precision and symmetry here. Number two, I don't want to risk any delamination. And number three, I am a scaredy pee pants. So far, so good. At this point in the project, I don't have the actual rifle stock in hand or know its final dimensions. So I'm going to keep the tang a little bit longer than normal until I know exactly what will be needed to fit it up to the club. At this time, the blade is thermal cycled three times, then quenched in Parks 50 with good result. At this point, I'm just finishing up some embellishments on the blade until the rifle stock arrives from Rex Kruger, which it ultimately does spot on time. I'm going to tape it up to protect the finish. He and I did not really have an order of operations planning session, which has made everything a little more challenging by the time this fit up has to be accomplished. So I think there's two ways to attach the tang or our blade to the uh, rifle stock. You know, the, the tang comes through here like this. It can stop in the middle, and then we can pin it all the way through, which I think would be pretty cool. Another real secure method is to put the tang most of the way through and then thread the tip of the tang, and then drill a hole from this side and make a uh, little end cap or screw to tighten down. And so it'll, it'll cinch the knife into the tang in this way, or into the rifle stock in this dimension. Thank you, Steve. Now we have to decide how to orient the blade. I think there are three choices, 90 degrees to the barrel portion, 90 degrees to the butt portion, or bisecting the angle between them. Rex has told me the angle is 159 degrees, which would be helpful, but I don't have a protractor, believe it or not. Uh, I'm, most of you will probably believe that. And even if I did, it might be really challenging to apply it to this piece. So basically, I just got out a square and drew a bunch of parallel lines and some right angles until something looks like it splits the difference. I'm hogging out a home for the Tang with this Black Dragon Forge brooch saw, which I bought from Niels Vandenberg's website. It's really one of the handiest tools I have.
As you can see, I've decided to drill all the way through the piece and put a threaded cap on the bottom or a finial, although it's not going to be decorative at all, to pull the blade down into its bedding nice and snug. I'll be making the male and female ends from 3 8 inch round stock. I'm fixing the thread to tang on a swivel because it's the easiest way to do all of this and without the ability to really clamp and measure the rifle stock while it's still square and still has some parallel perpendicular surfaces. I'm just not confident in all the holes and that everything's going to be straight enough that a straight tang will line up for that perfect fit. So, you know, a thread that swings will allow some play and in the end it's probably going to offer the best cinch up for me in this situation and it's plenty tough. I started playing with the silicon carbide stones for sanding and I'm not sure I'm doing it right because they take a very long time, maybe a little longer than sandpaper and they use a huge amount of oil. So uh, they are much cheaper than sandpaper and a little bit easier to get into the nooks and crannies. So plus minus. We're etching here with 3 to 1 water to ferric chloride. I etch for about 3 minutes at a time, sand to 1500 grit, then etch again. I repeated that 4 times, the 4th time was a 15 minute etch. The final polish is with 7000 grit sandpaper. I'm showing the final glue up here, although I didn't do a great job filming it. The blade has an okay chatoyance on it. I think a more experienced blade maker would have developed that a little better than I did. It doesn't show up real well on camera. I tried a bunch of different angles and some different lighting, and it's, for whatever reason, it's a little nicer than it appears on camera. I didn't put an edge on it because, well, it really doesn't need one. It's not functional in any sense of the word, and Rex still has to do some work on it. So I think it'd just be more likely to hurt someone than, than do anything useful. So whoever buys it can put an edge on it if they'd like. Hey guys, I want to thank you for putting up with my crazy sense of humor. This was a ton, ton, ton of fun. I learned so much as usual. I'll see you next time. <laughs>